Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 12th, and it is a cold, overcast, rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's just ugly out there. There's fog. It's been raining almost nonstop since I got up. I think it's only, we're just about hitting 60 degrees right now. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We had, um, beautiful weather all week and I, I can't complain though it did rain a couple times here anyway i'm uh, i'm back from our trip to ocean city maryland we had a wonderful time uh the weather was fantastic i mean it it really surprised me because when we were looking at the weather forecast and getting ready to leave it looked like we were going to be in trouble it looked like we'd have one nice day and then it was going to rain the rest of the time uh excuse me while i find a tamper there we go. So yeah, it um, it rained. There was one morning when I woke up, and this is like seven o'clock in the morning. I went outside, and uh, it the ground was wet, but that was the only evidence of rain I saw all week. We had beautiful sunny weather for the most part. A little bit of clouds, but uh, we we could have done every day on the beach if we wanted to. I couldn't have asked for better weather. So, uh, it, and it turns out it rained here at home, which was great because it kept my vegetable garden watered. So, you know, uh, yeah, we had a good time, real, real good time. Um, I've got some stories to tell. I was going to tell them all today and, you know, just get it over with, but there's two stories in particular that I want to tell you that are going to take a little bit of time to develop. And uh, I did that auto power off thing, didn't I? Well, <laughs> we'll just have to live with that. So yeah, there's two stories that I that I would like to to tell you, but I need to, I need a little bit more time to develop them. I got like a video clip and some pictures I want to show you. And in one case, there might be some legal implications because I need to identify someone, um, not for bad reasons, but I am gonna have fun with them. So I got to think about that a little bit. But just in general, I can tell you it was a great time. Um, lots of good seafood, lots of good food in general. Ate like crazy, uh, which was good. Uh, was a good boy in terms of the adult beverages for the most part. I did get the Mr. Ducks. Uh, we did get the, I did get the, the Bloody Mary that I was talking about. It was not what it used to be. I, and my wife says, no, that's what it was always like. You're thinking of someplace else. I know I'm not. I know I'm thinking of, of Mr. Ducks. But anyway, it was, it was smaller. It didn't have any of the shrimp or the crab in it. It just was, it was a Bloody Mary. It was fine. I enjoyed it, but uh, that was a little disappointing. The hotel bar, oh God, they had this wonderful beach bar at this hotel. Uh, you'd walk off the beach and it was there and it looked like it had been there for like 20 years. It was like, you know, weathered wood and a uh, grumpy old guy working the bar and just about maybe six or eight uh, stools and it was it was great. Um, it's gone. They, they put in some trendy hotel type bar now that, uh, eh, just not the same, but we had a good time. Uh, Went to Assateague Island one day, saw some horses. Uh, that'll be a future video I'll tell you about. I got some pictures and stuff. Uh, went to a, a restaurant that had some live music and uh, really enjoyed that. You know, st stuck around at the bar afterwards. Uh, again, that's another story that I want to tell you about. And that, that's the funny one. And uh, yeah, so it's back home now and uh, back to work tomorrow. And the little bumper that I had at the beginning of the thing was, you know, facetious. I mean, I know that's how you're supposed to feel when you come back from vacation. <laughs> but honestly, I was happy to be home and uh, I'm, a, I'm a creature of habit. So I'm happy to get back into my routine uh, starting, well, starting Friday, actually. We, we got in Friday. Uh, early enough to pick up the dogs, uh, got them home from the kennel. They're fantastic. Got a good, we kenneled them with our vet. So she did their annual checkup and gave them their shots and everything. And they got great health reports and 
the vet actually said they were good, which surprised me. <laughs> so that, that was uh, the, the, the helper. I don't know what his official title is, but the guy that like brings the dogs out while you're talking to the vet and stuff. He, he actually seemed sorry to see them go. So that's our dogs. They're, they're good. They're good girls, but they tend to be loud and rambunctious and they don't like change. They're kind of like me. And so they they typically spend a lot of time barking at the vet or at the kennel. And when they come home, they, they're real quiet for a while because their throats are sore from it. Uh, this time, they're you know, pretty, pretty relaxed and happy to be home. But I think they had a good time. Ah, uh, yeah. So we, we, we all got a vacation. My wife and I got a vacation and the dogs got a vacation. Not too bad. Got a um, haunted bookshop in this uh, J. Mutan Hawkbill. Very nice pen. One of the cane rod couch twin pipes. So, let's see. Oh, tobacco. So, you, if you watched my video last Sunday, I told you about what I was packing, and I took uh, the the Irish Dew and the Nutty Irishman and the jar of uh, Haunted Bookshop. Turns out I did smoke the aromatics in the, during the drive, but I also smoked a fair amount of Haunted Bookshop during the drive. Uh, at the hotel, so no smoking policy at the hotel. No smoking policy at the beach. You can't, you basically can't smoke a pipe anywhere. But you can have campfires on the beach, so go figure. Um, anyway, so I sat out on the balcony and smoked my pipe in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon and usually at night. Well, always at night in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon. And I, I thought about it, and I was going to smoke the aromatics because I thought, well, people will find those less objectionable. But the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, if you smell Nutty Irishman, somebody smoking Nutty Irishman, you know exactly what it is. It's somebody smoking a pipe. On a bookshop, I don't know, it could be anything, you know, it could, could be could be one of them campfires on the beach for all you know. So I figured Haunted Bookshop was the safer choice since I was clandestine. And uh, yeah, it worked out okay. I didn't didn't get in any trouble at all. So I did have this fun little game of hide and seek going with the uh, groundskeeper in the mornings because you know I'd get up early. I'd uh, be sitting out there six thirty seven o'clock in the morning, and he'd be setting up to water the palm trees and stuff. And, and you know I didn't want to put him in the bad situation of seeing me because. You know, he may not care, but it's his job. He's kind of got to report it, I guess. And so, yeah, he he would be out there, and I'd, I'd be sitting, you know, with my. The, this is the edge of the little balcony thing, and he's down there, and I'd be I'd be smoking, and I'd see him out of the corner of my eye, and I'd do one of these, <laughs> and I'd just kind of wait for him to pass, and then I'd take it back out. Yeah, it was fun. And, uh, and he didn't even know he was playing, so it was great, great time. And I guess one other little highlight, and this was really cool. The last night we were there, so this would have been Thursday night, we decided to go out for a walk on the beach. Uh, not quite dark, but, you know, dusk, kind of, uh, moon's up, sun's setting, and dim light at this point. And we're walking along, and... Trotting across the beach comes this, what I at first thought was a dog, but the, it just, the profile wasn't right. It was much too skinny and thin. And then it, it kind of turned and, sorry about that, turned and continued to walk away from us down the beach, like along the dunes and stuff. And I said, look at that. And my wife looked at me and said, what is that? And, and we walked a little bit further and it was staying in view for quite a while. Neither of us thought to take a picture of it. Uh, it was pretty far in the distance, though, so you wouldn't have gotten much detail. 
And eventually we decided that it had to be a fox, which struck me as odd. I don't really think of foxes as hanging out at the beach. Um, but it, it couldn't have been a dog. It was, it was too skinny and tall to be a dog. And it certainly wasn't a cat. And it didn't look like any kind of, you know, skunk or raccoon or it, it looked like a fox. So I got back to the hotel room and uh, pulled out the phone and did some Googling. And it turns out <laughs> there has been a, a, an increase in fox sightings in Ocean City uh, over the past couple of years. And there's one fairly famous fox that lives just outside of our hotel. He's not seen very often, but he, he and or she, I don't know which the fox is. It's one or the other, though. Um, the fox has a habit of stealing people's shoes on the beach. <laughs> and I thought this was hilarious, but they found its den at one point, and it was just full of shoes, like single shoes. Or uh, there, there were some other things in there. I think there was a ping pong ball and some other stuff they found. And apparently fox will steal things like that and take them back to their, um, what are young foxes called? Kids? Kits? They're youngins. And uh, they teach them to play with these things. And apparently that's an important part of the fox learning to, to hunt and fend for itself and all that stuff. Anyway, it was an interesting article I found on it. Uh, if I remember, I'll link it below. But it was right outside of our hotel. Uh, the article was actually uh, written about the, the dune outside of our hotel, mentioned the hotel by name. And, uh, yeah, it's all fox. That was kind of cool. Uh, anyway, so it's back to reality now. Uh, got home, like I said, on on Friday night and uh, got the dogs home. Had some dinner. About eight o'clock, I was sitting out on the deck having a, a a pipe, and I thought, "Oh, look at Instagram!" And I saw that Everett Young was doing a live on Instagram, so I stopped in on on that for a little bit. Uh, it was great to see Everett and and uh, chat with a few folks there. And by nine o'clock, I was asleep. So. But we will be back with the live stream this Friday night. Uh, should be well rested by then. Oh, and this was waiting for me in the mail uh, when I got home on Friday. And it is this new, really like this, it is a commemorative Cornell and Deal Zippo lighter commemorating 30 years of uh, Cornell and Deal's existence. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of Cornell and Deal. It's got their logo on it there, which is a tobacco plant. I'm going to assume it's burly. Why not? I don't think you could tell, but uh, yeah, really, really cool. I, I love Zippos. I love Cornell and Deal. So when I saw that they were making this, I thought, yeah, got to add that to the gathering of lighters. So today, what am I going to do? It's raining, so I can't do most of the things I wanted to do. I did spend a good amount of time down here yesterday working on part two of my uh, Rubbermaid rack. I uh, ran out of wood, so I have to go over to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and get a couple more, uh, what am I using? One by threes. No, two by threes. And I don't want to do that while it's raining because I don't want to get it wet. And so it's not going to happen today. Can't do yard work. I might just do nothing today because I certainly haven't done nothing all week. And at some point I got to open up my work email, which I did not do a single time while I was gone. I'm very proud of that. This is the first time in, oh God, probably over 20 years that I managed to take a vacation and, and done absolutely zero work. Didn't even think about it. So we're going to have to, uh, at some point, I got to look at my schedule for tomorrow and find out what I'm doing. 
and I'm, I'm dreading it because I know there's going to be hundreds of emails. Um, I, that's not an exaggeration. I, I get on a, on a normal day, you know, a not too busy day, I get somewhere between, I don't know, probably 60 and 80 emails. And on busy days, it can go up above 100. And I've been gone for a week, so it's going to be a lot of emails to wade through. Curse of working in the digital world. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to veg out for a bit, drink some more coffee, maybe have some breakfast. By the way, I, did, I didn't want to take my percolator with me, so I took a French press and uh, pre-ground the 8 o'clock coffee. It wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad at all. Different from the percolator. I, I was happy to come home and get back to my normal coffee, but uh, in a pinch, that French press did just fine. Guys, I think this pipe is telling me that I should probably bring this very rambly post vacation video to a close. Again, I got a couple of couple of stories for you, but I'm, I'm going to save those. Hopefully the next couple of weeks you'll hear them. And I have no idea what this week holds because I haven't looked. But uh, we'll see how the week goes. But I will definitely be back Friday night at 8 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, for my, my Friday night live stream and I look forward to seeing you all there So with that friends, I hope you had a great week. I hope your weekend's been wonderful And I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead So until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon Goodbye now